Greetings, good morning, welcome to morning service provided by the Northern Baptist Association for this Sunday the 22nd of March 2020 and uh, wherever you are watching this uh, God is with you just as much as he is here right now with me as I'm recording this and uh, we know that God joins us all together even though we are worshipping in very strange ways in these strange times. God joins our hearts even scattered across many different places as we are this morning. As we begin I'm going to light a candle just as a reminder that our God is present. Jesus is the life of the world. The Holy Spirit comes with tongues of fire and he is present. Let's pause and I will lead us in a prayer of gathering. God we gather even though scattered. We come together even though separated. We are one body joined by one spirit through the death of one Saviour, one God. And so it doesn't matter where we are, who we are, what we're thinking, what we're doing, what's going on around us, as we come to this time, we trust and we know that you are with us. Amen. You may like to uh, follow a worship song at this point. Normally a, a church service would have lots of music. I'm not going to sing any solos for you today. I'm very sorry to disappoint you. Um, and my suggestion is the hymn Amazing Grace or something else that just inspires you to worship God. I'm going to send a link to uh, one or two YouTube clips that you could play if you have YouTube on your computer. You should be able to access it. So pause at this point and find a hymn to sing. Amazing Grace or something else that will inspire you to worship God. Okay. God's grace is amazing. God's grace is never thwarted, not even by a virus, not even by physical distancing, not even by an economic crisis, not even by this global change that we're seeing. God's grace is still present. I'm going to read some words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, well-known words that just help us to put the fears and anxieties we may be facing into perspective. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 55 to 57. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But, thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour for the Lord is not in vain. At this point, let's have a time of praise. Prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of praise. You might want to add your own after I've prayed mine. Just pause and add your own prayer. God, we thank you that even though we are facing death, even though we are facing suffering, even though we are facing change, even though for some of us we are facing work anxieties, financial anxieties, um, social anxieties. Lord God, we thank you that the sting is taken out of these things because the victory has been won in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus' victory over death, uh, over hell, over sin flows into every area of life. Thank you, Lord God, that we can experience mm, something of mm. your victory through the hope that you give, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of this crisis. 
thank you that we experience something of your victory uh, over fear and anxiety. And I pray as we gather together that uh, you may enable us, just as Paul urged those disciples in Corinth, to stand firm and give ourselves fully to you this day. Maybe even more so today than we've ever done before, because we know that what we choose to do to follow Christ is not in vain. It is the most worthwhile thing to do and it overcomes all obstacles and all difficulties. We pray this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So add your own prayer of praise. Stop the recording and add your own at this point if you wish to. I'm now going to share another Bible passage with us. This is one that I'm going to share some reflections on. And uh, it's from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 1 to 8. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. I should point out that day is the day that Stephen was killed. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them into prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs that he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralysed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. We then go on to uh, uh, read in the book of Acts how uh, uh, Philip is taken to, uh, to, to heal Simon, uh, or to heal uh, and, and Simon the sorcerer, um, what's the same power? Uh, and Philip rebukes him. Um, we get a, go to read how uh, um, Philip is then taken to visit the Ethiopian in the desert. Um, and we then hear how Saul is converted, uh, how Peter has his vision of uh, the, uh, the sheep coming down, uh, and, and he meets Cornelius, and Cornelius is filled, and his household are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then moving on into chapter 11. This kind of picks up a little bit of the train of thought that we get in Acts chapter 8. Uh, so I'm just going to read a few verses from uh, chapter 11, verses mm -hmm. 19 to 21. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch, and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So a few thoughts for us during the beginnings of uh, more restricted circumstances with this coronavirus pandemic. We're learning... Uh, at the moment to discover what it is to be the church scattered more than ever before. We can't be church gathered at the moment. That has been taken away from us. And I know at the beginning maybe uh, that felt as though something important may have been taken away. I know in some of the uh, social media circles that I've uh, been part of, uh, there was some anxiety that uh, how can governments tell church not to meet? They have no right to do that. They have no authority to do that. Uh, it, it, it's... It's uh, something that God has ordained. But actually, they haven't stopped us meeting. They just required us to meet in different ways. We're meeting together as we do this. We're meeting uh, maybe in separate places, but we're meeting together. Some of us are meeting by uh, conference calling or by uh, emailing still or social media, uh, phoning. Um, we're still talking to people. We're still engaging in social contact. I must say, we mustn't use that word social distancing. 
We're not social distancing, we're physical distancing. Social uh, relationships continue just as strong as ever. So we're still church. Now this kind of way of being church is much less familiar. We've not done this before and I give thanks that uh, this virus, this pandemic has hit us in this way at such a time that we also have the benefits of technology and, and all kinds of different media that help us keep connected. I'm feeling in some ways better connected with people at the moment than I ever have done. Uh, but nevertheless, it's not easy. Uh, and I think it's a challenge to us because so often as Christians, we do run the risk of just equating church to when we meet on Sunday mornings. Or we talk about going to church. Church is not something we go to. We go to a building, but although we call the building the church, we know that that is a building that's used by the true church. Uh, and church is not just something that happens on a Sunday. Church is something that happens Monday to Saturday, wherever we are. We are still church, just as much today, just as much tomorrow, just as much wherever you are, uh, as when you're in your church building. So often in mission, we equate success to getting people into church, into our Sunday services. But actually, Jesus calls us to make disciples, and we can do that in the streets where we live. We can do that in our neighbourhoods and workplaces and uh, uh, in our communities. We don't have to bring them into a particular service for them to be a disciple. So church and the activities of church and the ministry of church carry on just as much uh, as they ever have before, just in different ways. Now, I am aware that some of us are, are facing anxieties. Uh, one minister spoke to me today, uh, as I, the day I'm recording this, and uh, said, in the worst case scenario, because of the age of most of our congregation, um, we could face the decimation of our church congregation if a number of people are struck down by this virus and do not recover. Uh, it could literally kill off our church. But I do want to say that's a worst case scenario. We don't know yet what's going to happen. Let's pray, please God, that we are spared from any large scale decimation in this country or any other part of the world. And let's think particularly of those with less good resources uh, to our own. Let's think of the poorer parts of the world. Let's think of what happens when this virus kind of takes more root in, in Africa and Latin America and the Caribbean and some places where there is less wealth uh, and resource that we have. But uh, even if there were to be death uh, and change and, and difference to the church uh, as we come through this um, coronavirus pandemic, God is the God of resurrection. We'll be celebrating that in a few weeks at Easter Sunday. Uh, and God can always bring new life out of uh, death. God can bring new work out of a crisis. And I absolutely believe, and, I, and, I, and lots of people uh, are saying this, that, that God is mightily at work, that, that a crisis provides opportunities, all kinds of opportunities for God to be at work. For example, uh, people uh, who are not Christians uh, are facing fears and anxieties. Um, they are finding some of the foundations of their lives being shaken and taken away. Some people are losing their work. Some people uh, are facing the death of loved ones. Some people are, are facing the loss of, of all kinds of things that they've taken for granted. Uh, some of us are facing the loss of toilet paper. There's all kinds of things that we are uh, having to readjust to being without. But we know as God's people the firm foundation for life is the Lord Jesus Christ. He can never be taken away from us. God's love can never be taken from you or from me. We can never lose the presence of God and the work of God. And people will be drawn to seek the spiritual in these times. My wife has a school friend who, who um, contacted her today by phone and just said, um, I really want to start going to church. Is your church meeting? I'm feeling really anxious about this. And we had to say, well, the church isn't meeting at the moment. But uh, we'd love to try and involve you in some of the things that are happening. People are seeking God and there are opportunities. God is at work. God is still in this. He still is Lord. He still is God. He's still growing his kingdom. And I think as we come through this coronavirus pandemic, as we learn to live in very different ways, new things will start to happen. We will learn to be church in maybe a more healthy way, not just dependent on, on one minister doing things for us on a Sunday, not just dependent on what we do when we're gathered, 
but actually recognising that we can be used by God everywhere where we are. We can be the scattered church. And it's that scattered church that we see in the book of Acts. It's that scattered church that goes out in a crisis, in a pan, not a pandemic, but a, uh, an epidemic, if you like, of persecution, uh, a crisis to their very existence. Saul was trying to destroy the church. What he found was he couldn't do it. What he found was he met the Lord Jesus who he was trying to destroy and he got totally reorientated. The, 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 the source of the, uh, uh, of the, of the crisis uh, himself got totally transformed. God was mightily at work in that crisis. And as these disciples, most of them totally uh, unnamed and, and, and forgotten, uh, not known to us, uh, they went to the homes, they went to their communities, they went to the streets, they went to different places where they had to flee. They went to new countries even and uh, they shared what Jesus was in their lives. They saw people responding and the gospel crossed boundaries. It crossed the boundary from Jerusalem to Samaria with Philip. It crossed the boundary from the, the, the Jewish world to the Gentile world. So it went out to Antioch. All these boundaries that Jesus has said, I want you to take the gospel to these places up to this point, up to the persecution, it had not happened. The church hadn't actually followed through on it. It took the sufferings to send the church out to do the job that Jesus had told them to do. So maybe, just maybe, in this um, pandemic, God is putting us in this point of crisis so that we will start to really become the church, so that we will start to do the things and be the things that Jesus has called us to do and to be. So I just want to say to you, don't worry about it, don't feel any burden of pressure, but just be your Christ-filled self. Be your spirit-filled self. Spend some time with God as you have more time to pray and to contemplate and to meditate, to read the scriptures. Uh, and, and as you engage with your neighbours, put cards through the doors, just ring them up, get in touch. Um, as you do that, ask God to use you. Ask God to be at work. Be a witness and the gospel will spread. That's how it happened in the first century that's how it's going to happen in 2020. We are going to see people coming to faith in Jesus Christ across our land, across the nations, because of this coronavirus epidemic. It will be happening. I know it will be happening. We know that in China the church is growing. In China where this outbreak started, there will be people coming to faith. In Iran where the, the outbreak has been terrible, uh, we know that God is working mightily amongst Iranians. People will be coming to faith over there. Um, and so let's trust that God's going to do these things in this country as well. So seek the opportunities and don't worry uh, if, if nothing particularly seems to be happening, you will be surprised. Little seeds will be planted every time you're doing a loving act, a kind act, a caring act. God will be in that gift of love and people will be touched. To give you one example, just to, uh, to draw to a close, um, we've been inspired uh, to um, visit all the, the homes, to put a letter through the doors of the homes in our streets, 80 houses, just inviting people if they want to, to get in touch, um, just to, to draw people together to support one another at this time of need. Uh, we've had um, probably about a third of the homes now respond, uh, a good deal of them are now on a WhatsApp group, uh, and every day we're just communicating and sharing such beautiful, lovely things. Some people have said, I've lived in this street for many, many years and nobody's ever done anything like this before. Nothing like this has ever happened before. I'm just so blessed. People are just realising there's, there's love and there's care and there's friendship and there's compassion, not just from the Christians, but in our whole community. It's drawing us closer together. But God's in this uh, and we're seeing God at work in it. Uh, and it's just wonderful to be touched by beautiful messages of support from neighbours that I haven't even met yet, but I'm just... Uh, corresponding with or, or on a social media app or uh, uh, receiving a text message from. So trust that God's going to do that where you are as well and just seek to be part of it however it's possible. Some of you will need to stay safe, absolutely. We all need to stay safe. We want to risk any kind of infection or passing on any kind of infection. We need to stay within the guidelines. But within that, God can still work. And our last thought is that uh, the, the wonderful statement of when, when Philip came into Samaria and started being a witness and God started working through him. Uh, it says that much joy came to that city. And 
it reminds me as well of, of, of the, the letter to the Hebrews in, in chapter 12 where it says, Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame. And so we're going through a time of suffering and trial. It may even feel a bit of a crucifixion, but there is joy set before us. There is joy still to come. There is joy of seeing God at work. There is the joy of knowing that at the other end of this outbreak, there will be, I believe, a bigger, stronger, uh, more vibrant church than there is has been before. I absolutely believe that. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for that. I'm, I'm longing for that. And I'm believing for that. There is joy ahead of us. So keep that joy in your minds. Life will be different in all kinds of ways, even when we've come out of this coronavirus. I don't think it will ever be quite the same again. But think of the joy that lies at the end. I'm already thinking in my uh, estate, we're going to have some kind of street party to celebrate when we can at the end of all this. We're going to have a barbecue out on the green that's outside my house. We're going to celebrate and have joy. Uh, just think of the joy that is to come. And even if you go through the hardest of things, even if some of us do have to face bereavement, or even if we were to lose our own lives, and that's something I'm facing just as much as anyone else, uh, we know that there is the joy of resurrection, the joy of the presence of Christ, which is something, even though we can't fully imagine it, that is absolutely real and guaranteed. Joy is to come. So may God bless you. May God give you faith and hope and courage to see this out, to trust in him and to be his light and his witness wherever you are. Amen. Let's pause for a moment. You might want to light a candle where you are if you have a candle. Light a candle to remind yourself and maybe put it in your window to remind others that Christ is the light of the world. If you're watching this on Sunday the 22nd uh, at seven o'clock tonight, churches and Christians all around our country are being encouraged to uh, light a candle, to put it on win in our windows as a sign and a symbol that we together, scattered around this nation, are praying, are trusting in Jesus, the light of the world, and are wanting to be witnesses to that light where we live. And uh, if you want to, uh, you could go on the Baptist uh, Union website. There's going to be a prayer broadcast, which you can access through the BU website, happening at seven o'clock uh, to, to join in with the prayers of other Christians, uh, of other traditions around our nation. But maybe today, at uh, this time, you'd like to light a candle. And as you light it, just have a moment of stillness. Reflect. What is God saying to you at this time? As you look at the light, think and pray for those you know who are particularly finding this hard. Pray for people you might know in places like Italy and Spain and France. Iran, China, that have been hit the hardest so far. Think of mission workers from our own Baptist family, mission workers from other Christian organisations in these countries. Give thanks for all the good that is happening. Give thanks for all those who are working so hard on our behalf in the health services, the emergency services, our government, all those who are seeking to uh, keep things going and to look after us uh, and enable this crisis to be minimised. You might want to also offer to God the uncertainties you face, the question that you might have, the questions that you might be facing. And just in a moment of quietness, maybe again pause this recording and offer your own prayers of intercession to God. I'm going to close by leading us in a prayer that's uh, been put on our Baptist Union website. 
uh, with this recording I'll send a link so that you can find it uh, uh, it's on a, a page that's about contemplation uh, and it's a resource that was due to be launched at this year's now cancelled Baptist Assembly or now postponed I should say will be happening just later anyway it's a prayer uh, that I'm going to lead us through but if you can find it uh, on the uh, website you can maybe bring it up and uh, join with me in praying this prayer there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven these are troubled times times of violence and hatred in a world marred by war times of anxiety and uncertainty in a world wounded by greed times of sadness and loss in a world of vulnerability and finitude times when we must face tough questions uh, with unpalatable answers even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no ill for you are with me and your rod and staff they comfort me these are dark times times when we need to be reminded that God is with us to guide our feet one step at a time to illumine our minds with new understanding to protect us from despair isolation and emptiness to enable us to prove our faith in resilience and fortitude Now the dwelling of God is with human beings and he will be with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. These are mysteriously hopeful times, times in which the promises of a faithful God offer encouragement, times in which new possibilities can be glimpsed, times in which we must live the hope of eternity, times when past, present and future meet. So, if you can join with me, let us profess our faith. We believe and trust in God, creator of all, whose promises are faithful. We believe and trust in Jesus Christ, who redeems all and who calls us to follow. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who inspires and sustains us in hopeful service. Recognising that these are troubled times, let us covenant with one another and with God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I covenant to walk together with you in faithful discipleship for as long as God shall so direct and lead us. Faithful God, as a community of your people, we covenant to walk with you individually and corporately in ways we know and in ways that you will show us. Grant us courage to face the challenges. Strengthen us with faith, hope and love so that we may walk faithfully in the footsteps of him whose name we bear, Christ our Lord. Amen. If you want to at this point, as we're drawing to a close, uh, find another hymn. Uh, I suggest Great is Thy Faithfulness, uh, a wonderful um, popular hymn still down through the ages that speaks of all that God is still to us today. I'll send you again uh, a link so that you can find that. So you might want to pause now and find a hymn of praise like Great is Thy Faithfulness to uh, sing or to listen to. And now we finish with a prayer of blessing, the Northumbrian blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you, wherever he may keep you. May he guide you through the wilderness. 
protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you and keep you home rejoicing and bring you home once again into your doors, into our doors as a Baptist family. Amen.